did you get interested in writing about surfing? Uh, as somebody who was raised around surfing in the 1970s and 80s in Southern California, what I started to notice in the 1990s was that the subculture had changed. It was becoming a whole different kind of political and economic animal. For one thing, the numbers of surfers were growing. There are some six million surfers estimated today worldwide. So I got interested in the change and in thinking about the change. Uh, because suddenly surfing wasn't local anymore. It was global in a way that was different and new. Surfing had homes in various places around the world, uh, Hawaii, California, and Australia, but it was making new homes and it was traveling the world with a new kind of subcultural identity. Um, the identity was less bad boy, less territorial, and more girl-friendly, more economically, uh, more ecologically sensitive, and it was also more commercial. So it seemed to make sense, a certain kind of sense, uh, all of a sudden to see in the New York Times Magazine an ad featuring surfers turned businessmen for Merrill Lynch about financial advice. or it, or to see John Stockwell making in 2002 Blue Crush, uh, a film, blockbuster film about young women surfing on the North Shore of Oahu in Hawaii. So I began to think about surfing as a case study in globalization. Can you say more about surfing and globalization? Well, surfing has set money, uh, ideas, people, and goods into motion in a way that has created new forms of commerce, of identity, of politics, and of social life. And it's done this not only because surfing and surf industry trades on the New York or Australian stock exchanges and is a multi-billion dollar industry, but because surfing emerged as a way of talking about globalization itself. We don't, we surf the web, we surf the internet, we don't walk it, we don't, uh, fly it or paint it. Surfing has emerged as the preferred language to describe users' relationships to new media in every language and on all the continents. Um, surfing visualizes mobility, uh, agency, and pleasure in mobility. So it's become a rhetoric of optimism about globalization. It suggests that the circulation of capital or technologies or people is freeing in the way that board surfing is freeing. So it's an argument. It's a claim in favor of socialization as in favor of globalization as a force for the social good. You use surfer girls in the title of your study. How are girls keyed into your study of globalization? Well, everybody today is invested in surfer girls and more broadly in girls. Uh, surf industry is completely interested in girls, whether it's in the fashion dimension of surf industry, global media, uh, the professional tour or elite competition. You have to think about girls today. Uh, surfing women are also interested in girls, uh, in part because they want to recruit girls into the water to change the masculine bias of surf culture. Um, and in order to do this, and I work at this at length in the book, they have opened surf shops and surf camps around the world. Uh, but there are other factors working here too. As I see it, surfer girls are poster children for new ideals of 21st century femininity. They suggest that uh, Western world gender conventions are freeing. And the California surfer girl in particular advertises to the world Western globalization as a feminist means to an end of women's liberation. Uh, the sociologists uh, Angela McRobbie and Anita Harris have talked about girls and formations of girls as one way to study the global. Anita Harris sees in the construction of girls now the making of a new vanguard of a new subjectivity, and I see surfer girls as embodiments of this new subjectivity. Given the complexities you've outlined, how do you go about studying surfer girls in the new world order? Well, just a minute ago I was talking about uh, surfing as a case study in globalization, and 
um, one that is optimistic about the possibilities of it to advance the global good. What I found on the ground in the ethnographies I've done with women and girl surfers is that they have a far more complex relationship to both globalization and to optimistic rhetorics about it. If power has diffused today away from the national toward the global, struggles over power usually show themselves in very local ways. In the book, I describe this power struggle through the language of girl localism. For surfing girls, the realm of the surf break and the surf towns in which local breaks are located is always in conversation with the global. So the local for surf girls is always also about the global. My concept of girl localism argues that girls have brought critical perspective not just to norms of femininity, but also to the material places, to the oceans and reefs and jetties and uh, beaches where counter-femininities are enacted. What's important for me about the concept of girl localism is that it points to a structural location, um, a critical relation of surfers to issues of, of uh, the state, of race, of development, and of gender. So what's important to me is, a crit is, a, is that it's a structural location and not a particular kind of politic because of the hundreds of girl localist communities operating in the world today, up and down the coast of the Americas, in Hawaii, in Australia, uh, in the UK, in Bali, in Gaza, in Japan, all of these communities share a structural location, a relation to power that's critical, but they have very different on-the-ground political opportunities and challenges. You mentioned to me earlier that you conducted this research over more than 10 years. Any surprises in your research, things you weren't expecting? Well, I could tell you about how I went to Sayulita, Mexico in 2002 to study a surf camp whose mission is to make girls out of women. Um, and I went there prepared to talk with women about the fears of sharks or big waves or sexism in the water. But what I encountered on the ground actually was the Category 5 uh, hurricane, Hurricane Kenna, which I write a lot about in the book. Um, I think most of the surprises have to do with politics and the relation of surfers to politics. Uh, in the course of my project, I saw Donna Fry uh, in San Diego be run for a, as a writing candidate for mayor. She actually won the mayorship of San Diego, but was ultimately disqualified on a technicality. But that was really proof about the politicization of surfing and upon women. Um, I've also uh, I found it amazing to go to South Africa and to travel to Jeffreys Bay, which is a surf mecca to the world, and to learn that uh, some of the 60 surfers in Jay Bay were Afrikaner ANC members. So who would have thought you would have white surfers as ANC uh, members? Um, more recently, I've seen a couple of studies, uh, of news articles about uh, surfing in the Middle East and Gaza, which relate to the work I've done in the book about Muslim surfer girls in Indonesia. And I think a lot of people will be really surprised to see uh, surfing in Gaza. I was less surprised because of the work I've done on it, but um, I was still really intrigued and I'm dying to, to go there and see the kind of girl localism that's happening.